like the middle school is here. Oh. Yeah, my wife. Yeah. The, oh man. The his daughter-in-law is at uh, my wife's school at the school site. Yeah. So it's all tight here. It's yeah. Tough. Yeah. Here, yeah. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah. It's been a rough week for everybody. Yeah. But you're killing it, man. Thanks for, Dude, thanks for doing Thank it. you, man. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. This is amazing. What? I love Flippity. Oh, yeah. I love GP I don't know. I'm sad that I didn't come into this early enough, but you said it was culture reads. Well, I've been changing this session. It used to be just about math. I call it, I, I name it after my keynote, the multiple representation math classroom. Like, But now I'm trying to weave in culture to it, like with, you know, your culture of your students and taking the Zaretta Hammond work, which is really influencing me, and Chris, Zaretta Hammond, and Chris... M A H A M M O N D, okay, yeah, yeah, and Christopher Emden, the hip hop Ed guy, like they've been really influencing me about how to bring kids back into make it their classroom, and, you know, like so. Yeah, thanks. I didn't, actually didn't even practice that. They just, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Like. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate Thank you that. So much. Yeah. Wow. That's very nice of you. Hey. As long as my camera is going to work for me today. Okay. One, two, three. You totally got me thinking UDL right now. Yeah? It's a whole new thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm just... So I, this is a Zaretta Hammond thing that she gave us at the training called a, a cultural empathy map. Yeah. That she said, uh, like, to get kids to fill out, to find out what they're listening to, what they're watching, what pisses them off, what's up with the fam, just to oh, get a check in with really? the kids. And, like, so I'm just trying to weave in as much of her work yeah. and that stuff into everything I'm doing now. Like, I, I was looking back at my notes of going to her workshop and, like, she has a workshop that she does. Oh, yeah. I think I follow her on Twitter. Is she a re ready for rigor? Ready for rigor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About one minute. One minute left. All right, guys, can, can I get you guys' attention? In three, two, and one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this a little differently. Normally, I do math. I like the conversation that we're having. Just think about what we're doing, math, or whatever we're doing. But with your same partner, can you shift over two whiteboard spaces and look at what you might have in common with those groups and have a discussion there? Like, what do you notice? What do you wonder about that? About that, partners? Okay, two going this way. One, two spaces over. Yep. 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 So you're going, uh, we, me and you are going. Oh. We're going here. Let's go here. Yeah. Did you already do that one? No. Yeah. And if if you want to write down anything, like what do you notice? You what? What do you want? What do you wonder? Check something. Like oh, I also watch that. Feel free to do that.
the outcome? Hmm? What's, what's the uh, outcome you're looking for? Just to build cultural understanding. Uh, we're not math this time. What's that? So not math this time. I'm going to relate it to math. I've, I've changed it, but I'm going to... My slides, I haven't updated my slides to deal with this, but how we could easily do this with the different perspectives of math and of strategies with math. But, yeah. So I want to start with this to begin and then do the math half. Yeah. What's that? Was that where you were, were you in math? Yeah. <laughs> Vice versa, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's a <laughs> Vice versa. All right, guys, go, go ahead and do me a favor and just keep walking around. Um, but don't be a looky-loo. Just walk around and stroll. Do not stop and just stroll and glass until you are back at your whiteboard, okay? At the last whiteboard you were with with that person. So do like a gallery walk type of thing. Yeah, I hate anxiety. Yeah. And I'm the I'm the girl brother. I don't have kids, but I have sisters, so my dad wasn't a girl dad, so I had to be the girl brother. Yeah. Vice versa. I I also hate that now too. Like I didn't know that was a Take about 30 seconds to find your way back to your uh, white book. Oh, stay standing for a little bit, just for a little bit, but I'll, I'll have you guys, uh, we'll, we'll have a seat pretty soon. Okay. So I want to. I want to talk a little bit about the activity. What do you, uh, what did you notice? What do you wonder? You know, could you see this? Anything and everything is, is fair game. Like, could you use this with your students? How would you modify it? Like, you know, this is called a cultural empathy map, if you haven't seen that. But I, I did, we did this in Zaretta Hammond's workshop, which was three days, which I just recommend going to and reading her book. And, but um, I just thought it was a, Easy way of doing this instead of a math task too, but yeah. Any such any? A great, uh, I think such a great opening day or opening week activity to get to know your students, for students to get to know each other, to see the commonalities. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Really good. You could really apply it though to any content area, any age level. Um, Say more about that. Uh, the content area piece. That, content area. Well, obviously with math, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. even thinking, um, I'm at a preschool through sixth grade site, mm -hmm. so um, thinking even like, I don't know, ELA with punctuation or grammar mm -hmm. or that kind of thing, mm -hmm. or reading comprehension, mm -hmm. I was just saying like character, like character analysis, like mm -hmm. you could even do something simple with the little kids, like a happy face, what made it happy, mm -hmm. sad, mm -hmm. challenges mm -hmm. and trying to I think model ways that they can engage in conversation and dialogue with others mm -hmm. sometimes um, something you really got to be creative with mm -hmm. so I like how the prompt really inspires you to think about what you're thinking mm -hmm. and what you're feeling and they really allow you to have permission to really just share yourself mm -hmm. as compared to thinking like it needs to sound like the teacher wants it to sound it's not about what the teacher wants it to sound like but it's what you actually have to share mm -hmm. I think that's really awesome That's a great question that I don't think I have the answer to because I just learned about this when I wasn't in the classroom. So I just posed that to you guys. You know, I just thought it was, I love doing it as a workshop participant and I know I would do it sometime in my classroom if I still had a class of students, you know. Any, anybody have thoughts about that? You could do it like, I mean, you could do it at the end of the week about yeah. something that you learned and then something that mm. you still wonder and mm -hmm. something you didn't understand or mm -hmm. whatever. And then be good as a teacher to be able to go back and say, mm -hmm. what, look at what the kids were willing to say they didn't understand. Mm -hmm. But that's a good point about building up the trust to do that, you know. Yeah. I don't, maybe yeah, there's some stuff going on in my family I don't want to share and, and right now or ever, you know. There's, maybe it's not... Make sure it's not raging. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, or 100, 100 points all around. You know, like. Yeah. We well, see if you have a block schedule, you do this once a week just to keep the kids engaged. And hoping that somehow it mellows out constant chatter for other things at the same time. Otherwise, do a focus for 10, 15 minutes and maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I like that. Good check in. It's like an edge of protocol. You know, and the more you do it, the faster. If you do it only once a semester, then it's going to maybe take the, because some kids can't wait to tell you about all the stuff. They're, but it's like, what's, you got one minute to do this, you know what I mean? Like, you get, and then give them times, and then like, you're quick, you're quick. Hey, we need to wrap that up, because we do need to get to other stuff. You know, and it's not in the standard, but is it important? Like, this kind of stuff? Yeah. Any other takeaways, thoughts? Mm -hmm. I try to incorporate math, mm -hmm. but I only find myself using, like, putting the word in the middle and then definition and on the bottom, mm -hmm. like an example or a picture. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions on what I can do with the other segments of the, the quad? Non-example Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Draw a picture. Mm -hmm. Like, Frere, if you Google Frere models for ELA, Frere, because that's what this is, is a, you know, um, Dorothy Frere, Frere models for math, for vocab, for strategy, for, you know, I mean, this is just cultural Frere, Frere model, you know. There's so many ways to represent yeah. a math problem to like yeah. the models. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joe Bowler, you guys are familiar with Joe Bowler? The Khaleesi, the maths Khaleesi, <laughs> with her <laughs> maths dragons to free us from mental slavery. And, fi and fixed mindset. I, I agree. I agree. Yes. And she uses it. She calls it the diamond paper because you can easily just do this with a piece of paper, right? You do it like fold it this way, fold it that way, fold the corner so it's got the diamond. And then you put like kind of like I showed in my keynote, you have the equation, you know, um, solve it algebraically, solve it visually, tell a story, something like that, you know, because do it as, as a pair because, oh, I get this representation, but you get this one, now let's talk about that. Oh, now I see your representation, you know what I mean? I think there's so much more to that with the content, but even connecting like culture, our identities to connect with each other, to show that we belong in the space first, right? That this classroom, this math class, this school is a place for us, you know? Um, the other thing that I didn't do, so I'm, I'm kind of, this is a hacked, it's a hacked uh, 
Go ahead and have a seat. Uh, thank you guys for that. Yeah. Is, is it gets you out of the students saying the prayer model is just for school? Is that this just looks like something fun to do? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to skip over. Most of this stuff is just telling, telling the story of like what, what I talked about in my keynote. Um, but so the people that have really influenced me, are like, you know, I, I really think like we need to become empowered as teachers and take some of these ideas. And like no one should ever say, oh, I went to Ed's session and it's like, how do I do it like Ed? How do I do it like you? You don't need to do it like me. You need to do it like you, right? What is your orange sauce and stuff like that? Like I had a teacher tell me one time, she was like, oh, so when I play music, I have to match the song with what I want them to do. I was like, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. If that sounds too hard, don't do that. I just thought that sounded like fun. And I can create that playlist and I had a fun time doing it. But if you don't like to do that, you shouldn't do that, you know? Yeah. And so you don't, we don't have to do anything. I think that's almost as dangerous as following lockstep into the textbook sections, trying to be like a presenter. Like, well, this is just one interpretation. It's like art, like teaching, right? So just people that have influenced me is like this idea of the whiteboards I first got from 360 math, put more whiteboards up. But I learned this was more about individuals doing work. And I was like, oh. I didn't really know that because I never went to the training. But, um, and then Peter Liljadal from Canada uh, has thinking classroom research. And I'm sending you all my slides, so don't worry about that. But I'm going to thinking classroom research where it's more heavily influenced me about the collaboration, the random grouping that I just had you guys do came from his research. It's called uh, think, uh, visible random grouping. You make your, your seating chart and your pairings visible and random so that kids, because when you give them a seating chart and just say, here's the new seating chart, what's happening in, in an adolescent brain? Uh, no, like, I'm what? Next to that. Oh, I'm at that table? <laughs> Am I that kid? You know? You know? Am I talking too much? Oh, you think I'm talking? You know, who knows what's going on in the adolescent brain in the adult brain for that matter, but the research says visible random grouping says, you know what, you just put it up to the app. This is your group, I didn't do it, the app did it. It absolves you from that. And then you get them, his research shows, and it just increases the enthusiasm for kids to work with each other. Because they're social beings, right? They want to talk. And even though they're going to be like, I don't get along with her, Mr. Campos, you know, I'm like, I really don't care today. It's going to be for two minutes, you know? Okay. So you, you know, and little by little, because what is more college and career ready than like being able to work with a bunch of different people? You know, another piece. So that piece has influenced me. I really like that piece, like using it. I really, I went to this Kagan. Huh? Kagan cooperative. Cooperative learning thing, which, you know, I don't want to get too far into that, but I think you can take something good from everything. I didn't like the training the first time I went because it seemed very, primary grade stuff for me, or, and it just didn't seem like my style. I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, if you're going to come in and judge me on, we're going to do a round robin today, guys, and foxes or whatever, I don't know, some stuff like that. I'm like, that's not me. But I did take one thing, which they call, like, every time they switch partners, they would, like, have a gambit, which is weird, because I always thought gambit was the guy that shot uh, cards out of his hands. <laughs> but the gambit they call was, like, a greeting, like, oh, how are you, or high five, and something like that, you know. It's like, the gambit of the teacher welcoming the students, you know, which way do you want to be greeted type of stuff. Um, but the gambits are the greeting, and I was like, when I was at Zoretta Hammond's workshop, I was like, oh, how cool would it be? Is like, if your gambit is tapping into the multilingualism of the, of the classroom, to know the languages that your kids speak, and live that being a lifelong learner is, who speaks Portuguese in here, right? Or any, how many multilingual people in here? Okay, what language is it? Spanish. Spanish, yeah. Korean. Korean. Vietnamese. Vietnamese, yeah. So what about if in our cultural map, like we have a, a gambit for the day that is like the greeting, like thank you, you know? I mean, I wasn't taught Spanish as a kid because my parents said that you only speak English in school, which robbed me of my culture because of the system. 
instead of saying there is no real official language in the United States, what power do you have? What power do you have? What power do you have that we can share? You know, how can we do that? And I think that's one of the next progressions. Uh, and part of it is because like Zaretta Hammond talks about, like we've been admonishing and diminishing, you know, language learners as defi the deficit mindset. But like instead of acknowledging that multilingualism is a superpower, but unfortunately we've had a system that has been afraid to acknowledge that. And now everybody but the richest schools send their kids to dual immersion, but in our, our schools, we're still not acknowledging that. I think that's wrong. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, first, before we get to the math and all that, we need to create the spaces that we belong, that you have something to teach me. You have to, I want to learn some Vietnamese. I want to learn some Korean. I want to get better at my Spanish, you know? And can I weave that in just with the greeting, even? What's the word of the day? Pee Wee Herman used to do it, <laughs> you know? And how dope is that if people are like, dude, I learned some Korean today, you know? How do you say thank you in Korean? How do you say? Kam ta ham nida. Close. Kam ta ham nida. Okay, I'm going to practice though. But, you know, if we spend time with that, like, do you think your kids will not want to be doing that along with the worksheets that they're getting, you know? I just leveled up as a human being to be able to talk to way more kids out on the campus, way more boys or girls or, you know. Um, so I think that's really important too. You know, those little, I mean, I'm going to call that the gambit, but I think that's just a way leveled up version of a gambit. If I'm learning a new, a new language and new phrases and new ways to commun communicate with different cultures, I think that's what I want to be doing in school. Defronting. So, so the defronting. So I spend a lot of time talking about culture, but it's the thing I'm recently passionate about. But um, and it's it's the way I'm seeing a lot of the lens. And the, the I have to give you a couple people to follow. Is uh, first before I move on to that though. Not that oh, um, Zaretta Hammond, the Ready for Rigor on Twitter, and then um, she wrote the culturally responsive teaching in the brain where she talks about like, it's, and it's really all related to the brain. Where are the dopamine hits in your classroom, she asked. Like, where's the dopamine? Where's the, that enthusiasm in your classroom? Because I forgot what the other chemical in the brain is, but boredom produces the same chemical as fear and anxiety. And it's, it's the fight or flight thing. Like, so you're either right away, you're building a culture of this is your class or this is not for you. This is just for this population. You know, so we need to, Bring them in, keep those dopamine hits coming. Christopher Emden, if you, I mean, both of these people are just amazing. Christopher Emden started the hip hop ed hashtag about how to, why, why we need to, what lessons we can learn in hip hop and education. Look, it's the biggest money making genre in the world. And the art of storytelling that you can tell through hip hop, the culture is undeniable to all across the world in different ways. It's used as political protest and stuff like that, voices for the people. Um, but he started the Hip Hop Ed. It's now a conference on the East Coast. You can go and learn, and they're infusing dance, graffiti, art, uh, freestyling, stuff like that. So that's a big part of it. But I think that is, a, because this visible space that we create here with the whiteboard space, I think there's so much opportunity to take risks and try all of these things and add, start experimenting, you know? Um, Matt Vaudry is where I got the music cues idea, because that's just fun. But even if you just play music, I think that lowers the anxiety already. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit lower. Like um, The visible random groups comes from Peter Lilgerdahl, where you randomly assign the students. You get one marker per group. That's what I didn't do this time. But one marker per group forces the conversation. One marker per two or three students. So that way, and you, and you randomly give, like when I do the flippity, I say, oh, the first person is the scribe, so you have the marker, and then the other two are, you know, doing something else. I usually start with groups of two before I work into groups of three and build up to that. Mm -hmm. But what does that do? Because if you have groups of two, and I'm used to the person that's doing all of the work and give me that marker, I'm going to show you the answer because I'm fast and I know how to play the game of school. If I don't have the marker, that forces me to do what? Mm -hmm. Talk, explain, be precise, right? Force that communication. 
So um, I, I really like that. That's the random grouping, and Flippity is the best tool I've seen for doing that. I do this with math most of the time, but I kind of wanted to have a different conversation today. But you can easily see, I'll just explain how I do this. Like this, this is a super low floor high ceiling problem. We could spend like an hour doing this problem. Where do you see the growth? Just imagine visualpatterns.org is here. If you're teaching middle school, high school functions, linear, quadratics, I mean, you don't even need to have middle school kids. You can have kids just saying, where do you see it growing? And just like getting their brains into, where is it growing? Oh, on, on the edges? You know, how do I describe it? Yeah. Ben, is this, is like, so is this, I'm not a math teacher, but yeah. is this just like how you'd start the class to get you into that linear algebra kind of thing? Is that? I mean, this is what linear growth looks like. Okay. I didn't know that because I just thought it was like a worksheet of a bunch of crap. Okay. <laughs> but this is what it looks like, and I can take that into quadratic growth, exponential growth, bacteria, things like that. I mean, that's going to get really big. But... What does stuff look like? And then how do I describe it? And where, what part of the equation is this? Like when I showed on the slides, 1 plus 3n, where do I see the 1? You know, it's, oh, it's what I begin with. There would be 1, one or square here. But this would be 1 plus 4n. Where do I see the 1? Oh, the 1 is here, this first square, or the 0 square. And then where do I see the 4? Well, I see it growing by 4 on the outside. But there's like... It, it's really a Joe Bowler thing too. The vision, she uses the visual patterns and Fawn Wynn. And there's just so much time that it's worth, before going into the worksheet, like we do our kids a disservice by jumping into the table and the worksheet right away when we're robbing all this discussion, you know? And it, I mean, think about it. Like how many different ways, if you had in a safe space to talk about this, to just draw the picture, see where it's at, and then how much different perspective would you have after you gallery walk to see other people's perspectives before I ask you to share out and things like that, you know? Does that make sense? So, you know, like there's, there's tons of different ways you do use the frere. Um, just the things I've learned and just by increasing the whiteboard space, right? Because that was the first thing I did. And I'll, I'll be honest, I wasn't using rich tasks when I first started. I was still doing worksheet mumbo jumbo with whiteboards everywhere. But you know what? That's all I knew. I'm not going to beat myself up for it. I had to start somewhere, and it was instantly better than what I was doing already. Kids were up, engaged. They were asking questions. They were trying. Because I didn't know any better. We can't beat ourselves up for, oh, well, why am I not over here? It's like, dude, we're, we're human beings. But we have hearts. We want to do better for kids. Test your stuff out in your classroom. Add a little bit. If that's what you're doing right now, do those worksheet problems on the, on the whiteboard. It's already going to be better, right? Less stress, less anxiety. I found that like it's healthier. You get kids on task super fast. Way more discussion. It's like a wonderful chaos in the classroom. And then you sit there, and I'm not as tired. I used to be exhausted by lecturing at the end of the day. My voice is gone, this and that. And now it's like, as long as I pick the right task that promotes discussion, which is what Peter's research says. You got to pick a rich task or something that ever deserves conversation that's doing some tea building or class building like that. That's worthwhile. And then my job is just really to ask some questions or go around and monitor. Maybe I need to notice that some kid is not putting anything down for their family, so maybe I should be aware of that. You know? I don't think that's, I'm that smart to do things purposefully. It's most of the stuff I do is by accident, like you know. But I, I like the graphic organizer of this. I do think this idea of I don't understand it that way, you know. But I do understand it that way, and it's a connection to get me over here so that I can understand the whole thing, you know. Yeah. And I mean, there's like, it's limitless, though, uh, you know, what you can do with it. Um, the, the defronting the classroom idea. So Peter's research is what he talked about, the defronting, right? And what that means is like right now, there's clearly a front of the classroom, mm -hmm. right? 
It's right here where the big screen is. How else do we know? Every single desk is pointed in this direction. Let's undo that, right? I was used to that, but when I, I, I helped to write this grant that, um, and painted that, I had a lot of input on like how I was gonna have my class set up. So I put it in pods, and they're like, oh, we're gonna, I had like money for like two giant TVs. So I was like, oh, that's cool. So what I did was, and I really love this, is I put, instead of here, because honestly, this is like a waste of space, I can have like two, three kids working here. And I think whiteboard space, I'm gonna put that greater than Chromebooks, to be honest. Give me Chromebooks later, but I could get the most activity with the Bluetooth speaker and some whiteboard space, and I could rock some lessons, you know? And so if I have TVs or whatever, I mounted my TVs in the corner here to make it, because it's a minimalism idea, if you've ever seen that documentary, like you really gotta look at your space and be like, what is it used for? What's gonna bring the most joy to your kids, to learning, to teaching? So I got everything off the walls. I said, okay, I'm gonna put my Chromebook cart under here because it's under, under this TV that was, and then there was another TV like in like maybe that corner and that corner. So there was no front of the room and I even got rid of my desk, to be honest, and I just had ran it from my laptop and airplay. I had a little, and I think I had a little podium that I could wheel around. But I was really walking around because most of my kids were doing that there. And then I bring this thing in because this is a big part of the defronting the classroom. Like instead of a, a dock cam or the mm -hmm. Elmo, mm -hmm. which I love, but I had a lot of anxiety growing up uh, when I was in school. Like I could play the game of school like a champ straight A's, but as soon as you asked me to talk about something in public or, or share my book report, pff, I was a wreck. Um, I did not like coming up to the front, front of the classroom, like, you know, but just by being a teacher, you practice, like, I need insurance, I wanna see, I'm gonna have to do this. So um, I, I never liked the doc cam for that because I could empathize with those kids that, because even if you, when you walk around and a kid is doing well, you're really like, oh, that's really good. When you're looking over the shoulder, what is that kid thinking? Or what do they do? They, they stop. What did I do wrong? Right? I'm scared. What's, what, what's wrong? The nice thing about this is, like, I can look over kids' shoulders all day long, and I can check for understanding. I see it all. Nobody's stopping working. It's a time management issue, too. I can see what's going on if I give them the right task. And then if I do want them, like, maybe the kid, because there are some, like, I don't want to stand up. Okay. So I use um, Air Server. You guys ever use Air Server? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it'll work because the, how much time do we have? Like, are we, are we done? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I'll send you the software, but it, it basically what this does is, like I use this and I have links to all of this stuff, is just my mobile dot cam because I can take this around everywhere and I'll be like, I don't have to yell at uh, Omar because I don't have to yell at Omar because, man, Omar, are you always talking? You know, I, because I could just sit and I could teach and what's up, man? How you doing? Pretty I can sit. I can sit next to Omar, and I and I can just sit here, and I don't have to get mad, you know. And I can just sit from here, and maybe maybe Omar, you know, I just wanted needed to reconnect with Omar. That that's why he's talking. He wanted to talk. We can talk while I do my math lesson. Oh, can, by the way, can you show me? Can you do that? Or for some kid that doesn't want to get up to talk at the board, I could just bring that to them, bring the dot cam to them. It's like fifteen bucks for Air Server. You buy an iPad, but it does work with Android and stuff like that, so, does that make sense? Like lowering some anxiety, see how these little things, lower anxiety, creating the, the place of belonging for, you, for your kids, mm -hmm. and then you can do whatever, like in math or whatever you wanna do. What is this called? Uh, it's a just stand, like just and uh, iPad uh, document holder or something like that. I have the links in it, I'm gonna send you all the links if you filled out that, um, but, uh, and then the last thing I'm just gonna say before I let you go, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, just survey your kids. Ask them about anxiety. Ask them about the changes you're doing. What did I do? Like, you know, do check-ins on yourself, too. Um, I was going to do a flappity, flippity raffle, but I think we have enough. You already got a white book, right? Yeah? Uh, you got a white book? So if, if you already got one, 
Can you just opt out of this? And then the rest of you guys, you can uh, thank you guys. And then email me with any questions if you have. I know an hour runs by pretty fast. Make sure you grab stickers here if you like the stickers. And then grab a white book. But be careful when you're taking the white book off. And, and I have a 40% discount code that I'm going to email you for the white books that you can use on the regular ones or the heavy duty ones. A set of 10 is like 60 bucks. Okay. The heavy duty is like 100 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. The regular. Original. Original. Yeah. Yeah, but my 40% discount works on both. Yep. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. You're very entertaining also. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, if you need to erase it um, here, and then if you want a little piece of tape to roll it up so you can close it, like there's still. Mm -hmm. 